All right, guys, welcome to Maple 17. Um, in this tutorial, um, I'm going to show you the numerical integration feature. I'm not going to go through all this, but notice on the left there's a lot of palettes here. Um, for example, if you needed to find it, use an expression, take an integral, things like that, square roots. Um, there's also variable tools if you need that. Um, Maple Cloud, which is something you can talk about later, that's stuff that can go online. You can go look for things, different operators here. Um, so there's a bunch of things in the palette here, and there's a lot of features up here. But I wanted to show you what we did, or what I did in this numerical integration problem. And the whole idea was set up of what happens if we started looking backwards versus forwards. For example, what happens if we knew how to take definite integrals and then work backwards to try to find uh, uh, de uh, definite integrals or antiderivatives find with area under the curve? So the first calculation that the instructor gives, and this is one of the downfalls that can be of Maple, is that you have to know code. Now here's that cast coming into play, so it's, it's really being written as we see it. Um, so what we have here is that we're just taking the integral of x to the x dx, and on that uh, interval we're going from 1 to 4. That's what we're looking for, the area in between. So I just made this a little bigger. And what happens is when Maple does this, it's telling you that you don't know um, the answer. For example, if I wanted to integrate um, x squared and I wanted to have x be from 1 to 2, I could get a numerical value for that. And you can see that that's 7 thirds. Okay, so when Maple spits something back to you like we have here, it doesn't know that integration. It can't calculate that integration. So this is when we can perform a little bit of math. So I actually have to load a package here. And if I don't do that, I would, I would get some problems here. I'm going to load the student calculus package, and it should load. And I'm going to approximate the area. Okay, so approximate, and let's make that a little bigger. Okay, sorry, I should have done that earlier. Let's go back up to 20, approximate integral of x to the x. x is going from 1 to 4 and we're going to partition into four parts. The method is going to be the lower or left hand left hand rule so the output is going to be plot. Now if you didn't know that, now this was given in the article, so this would be very difficult to learn on your own for a student, but the students were given this and notice right away it pops up and we get the area, the area under that curve from 1 to 4 is 44 units. Okay, and so what happens is they, they, the teacher says, well okay, well that looks great, well why don't we copy this and basically see how the right hand works. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that code, drop down here and hit control V. I'm going to leave four partitions, but instead of lower, I'm going to go upper. And very quickly we're going to see, oops, upper, sorry, I apologize, upper and go to the end and calculate, you need that colon there. So now look at the area here, it's 235. And you can see that there's a lot of area here that's way past the curve okay above that curve that's not in part of that so um, both of these are pretty bad you can tell right away that look you're missing a huge gap in area here and here and here and overshooting here so I'm gonna continue on and instead of using the lower upper here we also have um, the midpoint and we have the trapezoidal so we're gonna go midpoint and we're gonna go to the end here and hit enter and here's the midpoint now. Now the midpoint's at 100. So now we've gotten three different answers, 44, 235, and 100. So I'm going to go ahead and go again, and instead of midpoint, I've got trapezoid. And it's just a trapezoid rule, not trapezoidal. So we go to the end, and now we get 140. So again, there's a fourth answer. So it's getting pretty difficult. As you can see, though, each one of these we're getting better estimation because of the, the spaces that we're, we're leaving. Look how close the points are here. There's not much overlap, so the area is going to be close to that 140. So lastly, oops, go ahead and hit enter. We're going to go down again, and we're going to try our last one. I believe that one's just called Simpson. Okay, so we have Simpson. Now, we go to the end here, and 
we're actually going to get a good calculation of 140.35. So Simpson's at 140.35, 100.40 for mid midpoint, 235. So we know that the kids are looking at this, and hopefully you're saying, well, that's a, that's a big problem. So what happens if we went ahead and went to the next line, I'm going to hit 20 here, and we actually can calculate that um, integral. And what we have to do is redo this now, and if we just go int, oops, got to get our math feature back on, that's under text, we want math for italics, that's how you know you're in math, int of x to the x, and that's going to go from x equals 1.0, 4.0. Now, notice how we just add the .0 on here and the area, if you can read that, is 113. So this was just a quick example of what Maple can do for you. Um, and, and there's a lot that, that can go on here. Um, so one of the things you could do is we could, if you needed to plot quick functions, um, you know, uh, so this is, well, this is Maple, but if I wanted to plot something like, I don't know, x squared, and x equals from uh, two, negative 2 to 2. You can do that, and it should plot that function right up. Oops, that's sorry, that's just text, that's why. We want math. So anyway, what I wanted to show you guys is just a, a little bit of Maple and how quickly sometimes this can this can help out. Oops, error and plot. What happened there? Procedure expected. How about x equals? And there's your quick plot. And then you can you can highlight the graph, and you can you can add grid lines to this if you need to. You can um, change the color if you want to. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do with Maple here. Um, you can add a title legend. You can export these pictures very quickly if you want to put them in Word. So again, I'm so this is about an eight minute video of just a little bit about what Maple can do. Now this obviously is one specific example, but you can see how quickly and when I talk about uh, the calculations being very tedious, how long it would take to to work with all these. And if I wanted to go back and say, well, when is the left hand sum going to be accurate. I can do 40 rectangles and all of a sudden now I'm at 104. I'm still not at that 135. How about 75 rectangles? And there's only 108. So wow, if I go to 150, just an insane amount, then I get, I'm get i getting closer. But look how many rectangles it takes to, to get to that Simpsons rule. So you can see that. You can see that um, Maple can make tedious calculations easier, and you can actually see very quickly that Simpson's rule is by far the best way, and notice how close Simpson's rule is to the actual line of the curve. So that's just a brief introduction to Maple. Um, I hope that helps, and hopefully you guys have some interest in, in, in using that Maple, uh, in using Maple. So uh, if you have any questions about it, you can email me. I'm certainly still a novice at it, but I, I love trying to figure it out.